Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, discussing backup uh, uh, and restore storage partner solutions. Uh, I just wanted to go over some quick logistics uh, before we get started. Um, so uh, as you may see on your uh, GoToWebinar control panel, there is a section uh, for questions. We'll be taking, uh, you know, questions at the at the end of the uh, webinar. Any questions that you have, please put them in that uh, that questions uh, uh, section, and we will uh, try and get to all the questions that we can. Uh, you know, time permitting. Any questions that we're not able to get to, we will get to uh, at the, uh, uh, we will get back to you via email. Uh, also, will there be a short survey at the end of uh, today's webinar? So uh, we value your feedback and uh, we ask that you please take a few moments after the webinar to, uh, to provide your feedback. Uh, that being said, uh, my name is uh, Henry Axrod. I'm a partner solution architect uh, at AWS. I'm also going to be joined today by uh, uh, Brock Parrish, who's a, uh, a senior internet infrastructure administrator at uh, Bell Media. And he's going to be uh, talking at the um, uh, about um, his uh, implementation of a, of a backup solution for his environment. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and, uh, and get started. So really quick, I just wanted to um, mention for uh, those who are not familiar with the, uh, the Amazon Partner Network, uh, AWS has um, uh, over 50,000 uh, partners that we, uh, that we work with to help provide uh, solutions for our customers uh, uh, and the APN works with those partners to uh, help them bring their uh, solutions to the uh, to the AWS platform to enable uh, both the uh, the integration to and to be able to run on uh, on AWS. We have uh, two types of partners that we uh, generally work with. Uh, the first is uh, consulting partners and consulting partners uh, essentially are uh, system integrators that uh, help you to uh, to migrate, build, optimize, and even to, to run and manage your workloads on the AWS platform. Uh, we often have our consulting partners work together with uh, the other type of partners that we work with, which are our technology partners, which are generally uh, our uh, software and hardware partners that uh, work together to offer, you know, a wide range of solutions, uh, as I mentioned, that either run on AWS or, uh, you know, integrate with the uh, with AWS. So some of the things that a uh, partner uh, uh, bring to the table, you know, is they, uh, you know, have value added software and services uh, that can meet various use cases that customers may have that uh, may go above and beyond, uh, you know, native service offerings. Uh, you know, they help uh, to accelerate uh, your engagement, uh, whether that be by providing, you know, necessary software or consulting services that uh, help you uh, integrate and get your uh, workloads uh, on the AWS platform uh, quicker. Uh, you know, they have that built-in kind of expertise and uh, and take kind of, uh, are able to really optimize and use best practices across the, uh, the platform. Now, um, in specifically um, the, in the storage area, which is what we're going to be focusing on today, uh, we have four main use cases. Uh, those are, you know, primary storage, uh, which is running, you know, file block or object storage uh, platforms uh, with AWS. We have uh, archiving, which is uh, be able to move uh, long-term, uh, you know, uh, 
copies of, uh, of uh, data onto the platform. And we also have uh, disaster recovery, which is being able to, you know, recover, uh, you know, an environment on the platform in the case of a, um, a disaster for business uh, continuity. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing specifically on the backup and restore use case. Uh, you know, which uh, solutions generally use uh, Amazon S3 to uh, to provide a, uh, a durable data backup solution. So, uh, you know, we're first going to uh, to look at some ar architectures, and then we're going to uh, take a look at some specific solutions. Uh, that uh, that partners provide. So the general architecture for uh, you know a given uh, backup solution is there's generally you know a set of backup clients. Uh, then there's the actual backup software, which uh, you know has uh, you know a master server and sometimes you know media servers that move data you know uh, over um, you know either the internet or uh, AWS Threat Connect to uh, one of the AWS storage services such as uh, as Amazon Simple Storage Service or Amazon S3. Uh, backups you know usually are a uh, point in time copy of uh, of specific uh, uh, data. Uh, so in terms of uh, of hybrid uh, uh, backup workflow is uh, similar to uh, to what I mentioned is that you have your backup clients, your uh, your master server, and then uh, a variety of means to uh, get to the uh, the backend storage that would uh, that would run uh, you know on the AWS platform. Uh, can use things like uh, our AWS storage gateway. Uh, product which uh, allows you to have a variety of front-end protocols such as SMB, NFS, as well as uh, as as tape through uh, through a virtual tape library, uh, and uh, on the back end be able to talk to uh, to storage services. As you can see, uh, there's several partners that uh, that utilize this uh, this architecture. It's one of the uh, first architectures that many uh, customers utilize when uh, you know starting to uh, to integrate to uh, to cloud to the AWS cloud services. Uh, we then uh, the next architecture to, uh, that we're looking at is uh, for remote office or branch office, uh, where essentially uh, it's fairly similar to the previous architecture with the difference that the uh, actual uh, backup servers can be running on the AWS platform, so they don't necessarily have to be uh, deployed in each individual uh, site. Uh, and that can enable, you know, centralized backups so that, you know, uh, each site could potentially uh, have a uh, backup infrastructure or or not. Uh, in the case of backup infrastructure, they may have some local caching or perhaps keep uh, backups there for a shorter amount of time. And then, you know, the, those backups will go to a, uh, a central location, uh, you know, which would be uh, on uh, one of the AWS regions where they would be, you know, durably stored on, on Amazon S3. Uh, this next, arch next architecture is uh, a, uh, a backup as a service or SaaS um, uh, architecture in which all the backend infrastructure is being run on uh, AWS provided by the partner so that the uh, all the customer has to do is deploy agents onto uh, their clients running at any given site so that could be you know one single site like a data center or it could be uh, many different uh, sites uh, and it all points to uh, to the partner's uh, solution where they run manage monitor and maintain uh, the entire backup infrastructure, including the uh, the storage, and it provides a uh, utility pricing model similar to how uh, AWS services are consumed. Uh, so the main uh, partner that we work with, uh, you know, in, in this architecture is uh, is Druva, and uh, the 
uh, next architecture here uh, is a architecture for uh, backing up uh, within uh, within the cloud. So, uh, you know, and this is the, uh, the last architecture we're looking at, which is uh, essentially if uh, you know all your instances uh, or some of your workloads are already uh, within AWS, and you want to back those workloads up. Uh, the many of the uh, partner solutions that we're going to be looking at have the ability to uh, run completely in the uh, the AWS cloud and to back up, you know, instances uh, or um, or uh, virtual machines that are running uh, within the AWS cloud. So, uh, as uh, I mentioned earlier, AWS has uh, many different uh, storage services. Uh, here's a, a look at just some of the uh, storage services. This is not a, uh, by any means, a comprehensive list, but just to give you an idea of some of the different service uh, offerings that uh, AWS has. Uh, as you can see, we have offerings for uh, object block and uh, file storage. Uh, and as well as many data transfer services, some of which I mentioned, like AWS Direct Connect, which enables you to have a connection uh, directly to an AWS region uh, with dedicated bandwidth, so you, you don't need to get, use uh, your internet bandwidth. Uh, AWS uh, Snowball and the Snow Family, which enables a, a physical device to be sent to your uh, your data center to, that you can preload uh, data onto that several of our uh, partners work with, several of our backup partners work with to enable you to kind of preload existing data from on-premises. Uh, so these, uh, as you can see, the um, services that are uh, highlighted in orange are the services that are typically associated with, um, with, uh, with backups and with that are uh, backup partners typically uh, integrate with. So now I'm going to want to jump into talking about some uh, specific uh, partner solutions. Uh, the first one that uh, I wanted to mention is um, is Cohesity. Uh, so uh, co what Cohesity enables you to do is a, there's an appliance that uh, gets deployed uh, on premises. And uh, it's set up to be, um, you know, a secondary uh, data copy for, uh, with long-term retention to uh, to AWS. So it's, you'd essentially have a policy where, uh, you know, the the in this example, the first 30 days of data would exist on the Cohesity appliance, and then uh, data beyond 30 days. Uh, you know, depending on what your retention policies would be. So if it's, you know, 60, 90, you know, one year, uh, you know, data beyond that point would uh, then get moved up to uh, to AWS and, uh, and durably stored on uh, S3. Uh, it enables, uh, you know, encryption, deduplication, and compression of that data. So you uh, save an overall, uh, uh, overall cost. Uh, and uh, it allows you to get, uh, you know, very granular on the uh, the recovery of, uh, you know, whether that's down to a specific uh, virtual machine or even a specific file on a virtual machine. Uh, so uh, Cohesity could also run at, uh, at what they call their uh, cloud edition, where it can run on uh, the AWS cloud as a uh, as a EC2 uh, instance, in where it can use um, the uh, EC2 APIs uh, to uh, be able to in, uh, coordinate uh, snapshots of the EC2 instance. Uh, that makes it you know easy and quick uh, uh, recovery for. Uh, any instances that are running on uh, the AWS platform. So a few uh, customers that have implemented uh, uh, Cohesity. Uh, the first one is uh, the San Francisco uh, Giants uh, baseball team. Uh, it's, uh, 
many of you may know, this is, uh, you know, a American Major League uh, Baseball team. Uh, and th they had, uh, you know, a pretty large amount of data. They have about, you know, 125 terabytes of data, which they expect to actually, you know, uh, double on a year over year basis. And uh, so they were seeing, you know, this uh, this large spike in uh, in that uh, their over usage and needed to, to have a, you know, a simple uh, backup uh, implementation. And so they, uh, you know, went with Cohesity both for their backup ends as well as their long-term retention. And uh, overall, they saw, you know, a uh, annual savings over uh, $15,000, as well as uh, reducing their uh, their backup uh, window by half. Uh, another uh, customer that was uh, that uh, deployed uh, Cohesity is uh, is Dolby uh, Laboratories, and they're also based out in uh, in uh, San Francisco. And they had uh, actually, you know, several different backup tools that they were using, uh, and you know, tried to, um, you know, put something together to, uh, to, to move to uh, the cloud. And they uh, found that the uh, restoration process was very difficult uh, when they needed to get that uh, that data back. So they looked for, uh, you know, another uh, solution. Uh, so they ended up deploying, you know, Cohesity uh, with AWS and, uh, you know, moved their backups and they were able to, you know, achieve, um, you know, an OPEX savings of, uh, of around 30K. Uh, and they were able to, you know, now complete, you know, their backups as well as their restores within a, uh, a, a more reasonable, uh, timely manner. Sorry, we're on the right slide. Uh, so the next uh, solution that I wanted to uh, mention is uh, Commvault. And now Commvault uh, is able to uh, do backups uh, uh, in several ways as well. They can do backups uh, for uh, any workloads that are on premises to, uh, to AWS, as well as uh, backup uh, for any workloads that uh, are running uh, within uh, within AWS. They also uh, expand to other workloads like, uh, or the use case that should say like disaster recovery and archiving and integrate into uh, many of the AWS services, including, uh, you know, uh, many of the various tiers of, uh, of S3, like, uh, like uh, S3 infrequently access, as well as Glacier. Uh, and uh, are able to utilize uh, Snowball, as I mentioned earlier, to uh, you know seed uh, data sets from uh, that may already exist uh, on premises to uh, to AWS. Uh, so one of the customers. Uh, uh, utilizing uh, uh, Commvault and AWS uh, is um, the uh, M Millennium Challenge Corporation, uh, who, who is essentially a, a foreign aid agency. And um, they uh, originally had a, uh, you know, a different, uh, a different uh, cloud solution. They decided they wanted to uh, move to AWS and had a backup solution that w uh, that worked uh, worked very well uh, with AWS because they wanted to uh, essentially, you know, modernize uh, how how they um, handled their uh, their infrastructure as well as their uh, their back uh, their business continuity and disaster recovery. Uh, so they decided to uh, to implement Commvault and AWS, and they were able to see you know a 25% reduction in their uh, their storage that they needed for uh, for backups uh, re that that they had. Um, they also uh, saw you know uh, they basically reduced uh, from about. 52 uh, terabytes to about uh, 40 terabytes overall. Uh, 
and they were able to uh, get all their uh, their backups uh, up to the uh, the AWS cloud. The um, the next customer that um, uh, is uh, is uh, is Metro Trains, uh, and uh, they are out of uh, Australia. And they had, you know, a, a uh, you know an old on-premises uh, backup that they were doing to uh, uh, to tape, and you know uh, they had, you know, problems with uh, meeting their um, uh, their uh, recovery time objectives, and uh, so they uh, decided to uh, to look at uh, at cloud options. And uh, you know they're able to implement uh, Commvault with AWS, and able to see you know more than a 30% uh, uh, savings in TCO, uh, and uh, they were able to um, uh, significantly reduce the time that they would have to uh, to provision uh, you know uh, the storage actually for backups that which would take them a significant amount of time. Uh, you know, from literally, you know, months down to hours, right? Um, uh, it, it, since they're able to utilize uh, S3 and have, you know, the ability to scale to meet uh, whatever their, uh, you, know, you know, to meet their needs. Uh, and their uh, their recall times or their uh, their RTO also reduced uh, down from, uh, from days to, to just minutes. The uh, the next solution uh, that I want to mention is uh, is Druva, and Druva has uh, you know is uh, as I mentioned earlier in the webinar a SaaS solution. So they run 100% of the backend uh, infrastructure, and it's all run on the uh, AWS cloud. Uh, they're able to back up you know uh, many different uh, types of applications. Uh, uh, you know, uh, including you know uh, endpoints, so your your desktops and laptops. Uh, they could back up, you know, other SaaS solution cloud applications. Uh, they could back up uh, for VMs, file servers, as well as you know many of uh, uh, the other uh, infrastructure that uh, that you may be uh, running. Uh, they offer, uh, you know, both back of recovery as well as disaster recovery use cases and are tied into uh, uh, compliance so they can uh, run even uh, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, governmental workflows. Uh, so when we, uh, you know, look at the, uh, the Juve solution, uh, you know, one of uh, the customers that um, uh, deployed this is uh, Allergen, and uh, what they were able to do is um, they had, um, you know, essentially compliance requirements that they had to to meet, and they had as well uh, as e-discovery requirements, and they really didn't have, you know, a staff that could. Um, that, that could really, uh, you know, handle, uh, you know, all of what they need to do everywhere around the globe. So they end up uh, implementing one of uh, Druver's products, which is called InSync. They have two main products. One is uh, uh, InSync, uh, another is uh, Phoenix, and uh, a third that was recently added is uh, is Cloud Ranger. Um, so uh, they were able to. Uh, gain you know full visibility across you know uh, about uh, uh, of across all their re remote sites and that was across uh, about 100 different countries and this is where you know the frictionless nature of deploying uh, a SaaS solution uh, can often help as 
uh, deploying, you know, a you know, hundred different individual infrastructures in a um, you know in each of those locations, uh, you know, becomes uh, very complex and difficult to manage. Uh, so, being able to deploy just one solution on AWS that can back up all those locations uh, makes things uh, you know significantly easier for uh, for customers. Uh, so they were able to uh, essentially streamline their whole uh, legal uh, hold and e discovery process, and uh, had about a ninety five percent reduction in uh, their data collection time. Uh, the next uh, the next uh, customer uh, utilizing Druva is uh, is uh, Paul Corporation, and uh, they're a um, uh they handle uh things uh like um uh water filtration separation purification uh do, do, you know providing both uh you know equipment and services and uh they also are another customer who is coming from a tape management solution uh many customers uh you know uh who are using traditional on-premises backup uh, are utilizing tape in one form or another and finding it, you know, very, uh, very complex uh, to to manage and uh, and difficult to uh, provide, uh, you know, SLAs around uh, uh, recovery time objectives. Uh, so th this particular customer was uh, looking at actually having to do a hardware refresh, which uh, you know, many customers often start looking at uh, you know migrating towards uh, towards cloud when uh, hardware refreshes come up, so that uh, you know it's a, a very opportune time to avoid having to make a huge uh, capital investment in uh, you know in uh, things like uh, like tape libraries. Uh, so they were able to uh, deploy the uh, Druva Phoenix. Uh, product in this case, which you know is around uh, backing up uh, things like uh, like servers as opposed to uh, in sync, which focuses more on uh, and endpoints. And uh, you know they were able to get a um, uh, a single solution that were able to um, uh, you know to handle their global requirement. And really, they only needed about. Uh, you know, two admins to manage it. So overall, they saw a 78% uh, uh, savings in their budget and a 95% savings in their overall, uh, you know, labor cost to manage their backup uh, implementation. Uh, the next solution uh, that I wanted to uh, quickly talk about is uh, Rubrik. And uh, Rubrik uh, provides a solution where, uh, you know, again, there is a uh, an appliance that is um, is deployed uh, on the uh, customer site. Uh, you know, either uh, a physical appliance on premises or it can be deployed, uh, you know, on the AWS platform. It integrates uh, with backing up many uh, different types of applications and has a policy engine to uh, to determine, you know, when to uh, to back up uh, those applications and is able to move that data uh, to uh, to Amazon S3, as well as um, as recover that data on on AWS, even down to uh, you know to file level uh, recovery. Uh, so a few customers uh, that have deployed uh, the Rubrik solution. Uh, so the first is uh, uh, Fuji Rarebro, uh, which uh, is a uh, HLCS customer, and uh, you know they were using you know an old uh, backup and recovery solution that was proving both you know complex and costly, and so they decided they wanted to um, you know to virtualize everything and to uh, simplify their environment. Uh, so they decided to go with both uh, Rubrik and and uh, AWS, utilizing uh, Amazon S3, uh, 
and they were able to uh, to then uh, you know easily scale their environment and significantly simplify their environment, and um, they were able to uh, you know back up their uh, mission critical uh, data every uh, every two hours and had their RTOs again uh, going off of uh, you know uh, you know older uh, solutions they were able to uh, move their RTO from uh, you know uh, previously in days to uh, to just minutes. Uh, so the uh, the next uh, the next uh, uh, customer that uh, deployed uh, rubrics is a, uh, a research university uh, called uh, UC uh, San Diego, uh, and they uh, you know were using again a um, you know an, an old uh, back of recovery solution. Uh, you know, and they had, uh, you know, issues uh, getting the RTOs, uh, you know, the uh, recovery time that they were looking for ultimately, uh, as, as well as uh, having difficulties managing, you know, a uh, more complex solution. Uh, so they decided to uh, implement Rubrik and they were able to see, um, you know, uh, significantly faster restores of their uh, VMs going down to less than 30 minutes from previous, you know, over five hours, as well as, you know, significant time savings in actually managing the solution. So it enabled, you know, significant um, simplification of the solution for them. Uh, next uh, solution uh, that I wanted to mention is uh, Datas.io with their uh, RecoverX solution. This solution is mainly around uh, backup and protection of uh, of databases. So they focus uh, mainly on uh, non-relational databases, although they also support uh, relational databases, uh, and are able to provide, you know. Uh, uh, both uh, a consistent backup as well as uh, several uh, methodologies for data efficiency. So they could provide both uh, quick backups as well as, uh, you know, uh, consistent backups of those uh, database platforms in a uh, very storage uh, efficient manner. Uh, so a uh, couple of customers, uh, or one customer that is, uh, has worked with um, uh, Datas.io and deployed that is uh, Alliant Networks, and they uh, basically an uh, IoT platform. And uh, you know they need uh, to back up a Cassandra database uh, that uh, that they had running, and so they had um, that running on top of AWS and EC2, and uh, they, uh, you know, deployed uh, Datas.io, and they were able to um, uh, to back up those uh, that Cassandra uh, cluster, and uh, they were able to reduce their uh, backup storage cost by about uh, 67% versus their their previous uh, methodology of uh, of backing up that uh, that cluster. Uh, and the last uh, solution that uh, we wanted to uh, to uh, talk about um, today was uh, Veritas Net Backup. Uh, Veritas Net Backup is, you know, an enterprise backup solution that's been around for quite a while, and they support, um, you know, backing up uh, uh, data to uh, to AWS as well as being able to recover uh, data in AWS and uh, to protect data, uh, you know, uh, protect workloads that are running uh, running uh, on AWS, uh, such as EC2 instances. Uh, they support uh, uh, various tiers of uh, of uh, AWS S3 as well as uh, as Glacier, and support different technologies like uh, like deduplication. Uh, and compression, as well as being able to, um, uh, you know, support, uh, you know, backing up many different types of applications and enterprise uh, workloads. 
uh, so a couple of customers that uh, that uh, have deployed um, uh, Veritas uh, Net Backup. Uh, so the first company here is uh, Swire, and they're basically in uh, food production and distribution. And they wanted to, uh, you know, essentially improve their uh, business continuity and be able to protect their critical uh, their critical data. So they wanted uh, Net Backup to uh, protect their SAP environment as well as their uh, their databases and virtual machines. Um, and uh, so they end up uh, deploying a solution and we're able to, uh, you know, gain that uh, that business continuity that they're looking for and while, uh, you know, while getting also that, uh, you know, a full data protection solution, uh, which enabled them to kind of, you know, transform their, uh, their IT to, um, to you know, cloud-based uh, solution. Uh, the next customer is uh, CIMC, uh, which um, is a uh, you know a uh, a uh, a a company out of uh, uh, China, and uh, you know they were looking to um, uh, to to move their uh, their critical uh, business applications to to the cloud. And you know they needed something that could provide them a data protection solution. Uh, so they looked at uh, they ended up deploying a uh, Veritas Net Backup appliance in their data center, and uh, a as well as a um, a cloud-based uh, instance of uh, Net Backup. And they were able to you know satisfy their uh, their DR requirements and improve their you know, uh, efficiency uh, with data protection. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, hand it over to a, uh, a uh, you know, to Brock from Bell Media, who's going to actually talk about uh, how uh, Bell Media implemented uh, net backup in their environment and uh, we're very excited to hear from you. So, uh, Brock, uh, take it away. Thank you, Henry. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Brock Parrish. I'm a senior internet infrastructure administrator at Bell Media. Bell Media is one of the leading content and creation companies. We have premier assets in television, radio, out of home advertising, and digital media. Uh, we're a telecom, television, digital media company, and we have very large digital properties in television, radio, news, sports, lifestyle. Many of the websites that I'm an administrator of are requiring as close to 100% uptime as possible. I strive for the five nines. Uh, we are advertised, advertising revenue is the name of our game that pays our bills. That's why it's mission critical for our large properties to be online at all times. So some of the challenges that we were facing uh, were to do with our backup systems and our disaster recovery. Uh, I have a long time, a long time net backup semantic. Uh, in the old days, with backup exactly was using tapes, uh, very cumbersome, uh, having to go over and get tapes, bolt them. You know, anyone out there who's dealt with tapes knows that it was not a fun time. I mean, it may still be but my goal was to advance us to an environment that was much more robust and to take on a lot more of our required backups and it, it was changing with different types of backups that we were required to uh, retain. So where our system was going then, we were looking at leaving our, our tape environment and our backup exact environment and moving over to net backup. And that was, uh, the focus then was to have two 5230 net backup appliances with 40 terabytes each with SSDs rather than OC tapes. Uh, initially, I had both these appliances and the storage on-prem in one location in Toronto. Um, that has been, had been great for us. I was, much, I was able to, to take on different types of workloads and different types of backups. Um, we were definitely moving to more of a VM-based backup system. Uh, you know, we were, I was virtualizing my environment, going to vCenter, and the demands and requirements was 
to back up and be able to restore those VMs very quickly. And in a safe environment, that just wasn't going to be possible for me. So going to 250, 230 appliances, 40 terabytes each, is able to uh, change those workloads, both VMs, we're talking databases, uh, MS SQL, MySQL. Uh, we're going from much more from a file-based system to differing workloads, especially, as I said, virtual machines. Uh, I needed to provide a guaranteed um, retention of at least two weeks for uh, those systems. And then um, as I get to talk about the cloud, you'll see that I was looking into longer retention and where I was going to keep that. Uh, the main thing for me was I had to provide guaranteed protection uh, more than just on-prem. Uh, and that's why we, we've moved on in, in the next slide to be talking about you know, our experience with going to AWS and using that backup. So the, the solution is why Veritas and, and AWS. And for me, uh, we, we first of all moved one of those appliances from Toronto to Montreal. And the reason why we did that is we needed to have, uh, I wanted to include our data protection in a DR scenario. I wanted to be able to send the uh, backups, uh, a copy of the backups from Toronto to Montreal and vice versa so that I could actually recover from uh, either location and provide that um, data protection uh, in a different location. So um, for me, having everything on-prem in one location in Toronto was just, it just wasn't uh, fulfilling any of our disaster recovery requirements. So uh, we're looking at, we're then looking at, okay, so let's, let's look at how we can get into the broadest backup and recovery workload support. So, as I said, we went from a file system, really, to now we have VMs, we have Red Hat, uh, we have uh, MySQL, we have MS SQL, we have Windows, and also with the uh, new 812, which we upgraded to, we had the ability to back up MongoDB, which we're also using now. So we wanted all of this, but I also wanted to say, what can I do to even increase the DR more, uh, and also what can I do to you know, reduce costs. So we have these two situations where I've got physical appliances and I also wanted to move to the cloud. So 812 we upgraded to and it has two features that have changed everything for me and the company now is saving money as well. We looked into 812 mainly for the feature of Cloud Catalyst and Cloud Point. So Cloud Catalyst we have in AWS already, I have an S3 bucket. That S3 bucket, I'm setting mission critical VMs to that I want to retain for longer than my two week retention span. So that bucket is 10 terabytes or was 10 terabytes before I introduced Cloud Catalyst and 812 into my environment with NetBackup. Already that 10 terabytes has gone down to three terabytes. And the reason being is Cloud Catalyst gives me the ability to deduplicate to the cloud. So before I'm sending 10 terabytes every week to the cloud from my on-prem environment, and we all know how costly that can be. Uh, I, I'm actually sending this, a lot of that information was the same every week, and I'm sending it over and over and over again. Now with Cloud Catalyst, it's saying, what do I already have in that S3 bucket? I have this, which if it's got a high deduplication ratio, which it does for me about 99% or higher, now it's only sending what's changed massive savings for our company. Uh, I'm not sending 10 terabytes, I'm sending, I'm sending just gigabytes now and saving the company a lot of money. My upper management has already seen that savings and Cloud Catalyst really gives me the ability now to not just store in the cloud, but to, to do it in a much more efficient and less costly way. I also have some EC2 instances in AWS. I have 10 web services, 10 instances of my web services running in the cloud. Uh, that includes some uh, internet facing web servers, also uh, MS, sorry, my uh, SQL server and storage. So those are running in the cloud and have been for quite a while, but I've had no way to actually back those up. So now with CloudPoint, I'm actually backing those up in EC2 with a CloudPoint server that exists in EC2 and I can restore them in EC2. No data transfer back to my on-prem environment. I'm able to back those up, restore them in the cloud, and basically the data transfer is 
just happening within EC2 itself. Great savings, gives me that data protection that I had to have for those EC2 instances that I didn't have before Cloud, Cloud Point came around. So there's another instance of what I've given myself now is I'm saving in the cloud with my S3 bucket, and I'm also now able to back up and restore my essential EC2 services that I was not able to before. This is part of the journey that I'm taking to AWS, and it's only made available with companies like Veritas and the product like NetBackup. I'm able to justify to my management that has to have the buy-in that we can exist there. We can exist there by optimizing, uh, proving the performance once we're there, and one of the biggest is cost, and that's what I'm really addressing now with CloudPoint and Cloud Catalyst. So, as I move into the cloud and have more essential services, now I have that protection that I had on-prem before. So that is great, and I'll get to control all this through a new UX that uh, NetBackup 812 provides. This new UX is web-based, it's not a Java console. I can go in there, I can protect my assets that are in the EC2 instance, and I can also um, change the policies, create policies, see my status of all my jobs, and it's Finally, also available, I can do it on my mobile phone. So it's amazing, and, and 812 is the biggest jump I've seen in the many years that I've been using that backup now. So if you can look at uh, the next slide, it shows my architecture. So you can see how my architecture was set up when I went back to the early days. I, I, you can see I have two appliances. One is in Toronto there, one is in Montreal. They're both 5230s with 40 terabytes each. Those were together in Toronto. I've separated them for that DR functionality that I can send jobs back and forth. Sorry, I can send backups of jobs to each one. Um, the, the, the teams in Montreal use the plants in Montreal to do their backup jobs and then send a copy to Toronto. Teams in Toronto use the clients here in Toronto and send a, a copy of the backups to Montreal. The cloud, uh, you can see the network of cloud catalyst. That's a, a VM that exists in my, uh, my infrastructure, my vCenter in Toronto. That Cloud Catalyst is doing the deduplication work to send uh, the data that, uh, to, the, to my S3 bucket that's in AWS and uh, is doing that deduplication work and only sending what's changed. That's the key that you should be thinking about here is that anytime you send things to the S3 bucket before, now with Cloud Catalyst, I'm only sending what's changed. You can just imagine the data transfer I'm saving and the cost of actually, you know, not not sending 10 terabytes. Now, uh, you know, I'm down to three terabytes for storage alone in S3, which is saving, but I'm also only sending what's changed, which is just a game changer for me. Um, also in AWS there, I'm not sure if it's on this slide, but that's where the CloudPoint and my EC2 instances live. And uh, that CloudPoint server backs up the uh, 10 instances that I have in EC2. It does communicate to my server just for uh, running jobs and, and communication, kind of like the brains of the operation with my net backup on-prem, but there's no data transfer going on there. It's very little. The, the on-prem uh, appliance is just kind of telling CloudPoint, interacting with CloudPoint through the new UX, but very little data transfer. It's really just telling CloudPoint what to do. I want you to, there's the policy, I want you to do this. It's not a lot of uh, data transfer, and that's really what I'm trying to avoid here. I'm trying to make sure that I can live in the cloud for you know a very lower cost than before, and you know we do have to look at as we go to the cloud, what performance are we gaining, uh, and that's to do with your optimization between on-prem and deciding you know what applications are best served in the cloud. This is the challenge all of us are going to have to go to the cloud is to find out what applications should live there. Like not everything is going to live there immediately because maybe you know there's some there's some reasons to have on-prem, but as we go to the cloud, we have to look at optimization, performance, and cost. So um, I guess the overview is what we're looking at here. Is, you know, I'm, I've been looking for a single standardization data protection solution and management interface. And right now, NetBackup 812 gives me all of that. With the new UX, I can control um, and manipulate my what I actually have in AWS right now, as well as my on-prem environment. Uh, above all, A12 is with the reduced cloud network ingress traffic and associated backup storage consumption that I've saved. I say over 90%. It's definitely, if you look at my cloud catalyst, I'm 10 to 3 terabytes. So that is that is growing smaller every day, not growing the other way. I, I, it has more and more information there that it, it isn't changing. That 3 terabytes is reducing thanks to the cloud catalyst and deduplication, saving the 
company a lot of money. Uh, CloudPoint, new feature that I didn't have before. I added these instances in EC2 and I wasn't backing them up. And that worries me for DR. I have to have everything backed up and to be able to restore that VM uh, instantly. If I can't get that VM up quickly, uh, we have sites down, revenue lost. So we have all those features, and one really, I have to talk about the sexy feature that I've been using recently is Amazon Alexa. So I'm an early adopter with uh, NetBackup, and uh, right now, with authentication too, which is great about this, I can use my Amazon Alexa, I can use my Dot or my Echo, and uh, I authenticate, and then I can ask Alexa how my NetBackup is doing. And that's both on-prem and in the cloud. I find out my job status, what jobs fail, the error codes, and I can ask what the error code even means, so I can find out exactly what you know what that is the, the cause of that failure. Um, and the best part for me was really cool, and this is the future of, of I think any uh, assistance, any voice assistance, is that I can command Alexa to change the environment, so I can ask it to. It'll I'll ask how many unprotected assets do I have in uh, in AWS, and it'll say you know I, out of my ten, say six are unprotected. Then she will ask me, would you like to protect those assets? And I say yes. And those assets, all 10 of them are then protected. I can go into the uh, web UX and actually refresh it. And I would see it, she actually changed my environment. And as much as it's great to have information, which is very helpful for me, the future is being able to change your environment through uh, voice assistance. So that's just a really sexy feature. But to be honest with you, I can see it uh, moving forward. Uh, very useful in my daily life. So I guess overall, A A12 is a game changer for me. It's been it's been a massive improvement, and then it makes I I'm looking to I want one day my whole infrastructure to be in AWS. That's a big ask. I'm going to take some time, but uh, these are the type of tools that that have helped me to on my journey to get uh, all my infrastructure in AWS. So thanks for having me today, and thanks, Henry. All right, thank you uh, very much, Brock, and that was. Uh... That was a, a great uh, story. We're very glad to hear uh, how you're using NetBackup and AWS. And I'm sure many people will be excited to hear about the early adapter uh, program for Alexa for Business with uh, with NetBackup. Uh, and if anyone is currently using NetBackup is interested in that, please reach out to your uh, your NetBackup uh, account manager uh, or your Veritas account manager to uh, find out more details about that. Um, so just a few uh, additional resources uh, I wanted to mention, you know, there is the um, the AWS Backup and uh, Restore Competency uh, Partner uh, solution page that you can go and visit and you can uh, discover some of our uh, AWS uh, partner, backup partners uh, in, as part of our competency, which is uh, our highest level of, uh, of, uh, of the APN uh partner uh, tiers so that um uh you can uh, see those various solutions uh you can also view other webinars on demand uh via the link provided here and you can just search by the uh you know by the storage uh, competency i mean by this yeah uh, by storage competency uh we also have uh, a uh, a white paper uh that specifically goes into you know even more detail about uh uh various partner solutions and how their backup solutions work with AWS so if you're interested in uh diving a little uh, a little bit deeper on how that uh uh how each of these solutions work uh you can uh take a look at that white paper and we also, uh, you know, have a, uh, a solution brief available for uh, for you on uh, backup and restore uh, uh, solutions. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to take uh, any uh, any questions. Uh, so I see uh, one uh, question. Uh, uh, Br Brock, are you still uh, on here? Yeah, I'm here. Hey uh, Brock, so uh, so one one question uh, for for you, uh, can you uh, talk about um, uh, how much uh, data that you back up and uh, uh, what kind of uh, you know savings you've seen so far with the uh, deduplication? Yeah, so we actually, uh, it's a good question, especially right now, our 40 terabytes is pretty much being maxed out. We have so many different workloads from different teams and we're looking into buying more shelves 
but it also saves uh, money by sending some of those workloads to the cloud rather than just immediately buying new hardware. So one of my uh, things I'm looking into right now is how much do I put in the cloud versus how much do I buy physical more storage. Um, but uh, we, we've been pretty early sending things to the S3 with Cloud Catalyst, but like I said, I've already reduced that 10 to 3 terabytes I'm waiting for the bill, but I'm anticipating saving uh, you know, upwards of thousands a month is what I'm looking at now. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's significant. I know that my manager has already come up to me and asked, uh, he said, if the credit card bill is smaller, is everything okay? So that's, that's a positive sign for me. It's definitely, I see thousands for us over month to month and actually increasing as that bucket gets smaller. Um, you know, that's the Cloud Catalyst is the real savings dollar-wise there. Um, another savings you can look at to do yourself too is just debating, you know, buying more physical storage versus do you put it in AWS. But I think you do have to look at, um, you know, high deduplication rates. Try to find the content that can have a high deduplication rate because that's where your real savings can come in. If you're going to have content on the cloud that doesn't have a high deduplication rate, you're going to be paying more for that data transfer because you're going to be sending more data to the cloud. So once you target those high deduplication rate data that you can, you know, you can get around the 99 or, or you know, you might not always get that, but try to go for your high ones. That's where you'll find your large cost savings. And I mean, it depends on how much you're saying there. For me, it's thousands per month we're saving right now. I think it's going to increase. It depends on how much uh, information you already had in the next three bucket. And then using Cloud Catalyst with that dedupe, uh, you'll definitely see savings if you have a high deduplication ratio in there. All right, thank, thank you very much, Brock. Uh, so another question here is if the um, if the presentation we made, uh, you know, uh, available later. So uh, the webinar itself will uh, will be uh, will be posted, uh, and not that, uh, that link that I uh, previously uh, provided. Uh, so you'll be able to, uh, you know, watch the uh, the webinar, uh, you know, on demand at any time uh, you like. If you're also interested in uh, diving deeper, uh, you know, beyond the uh, the white papers and other information or the vendor docs uh, provided, uh, you can either reach out to your uh, your account manager at, uh, at the particular uh partner solution that if you already are a customer of that solution or uh you know if you're currently working with aws you can reach out to your aws uh account manager or solution architect and uh they can uh provide you additional information and get you in touch with the uh the right people to uh to dive even deeper about uh, uh any, any particular solution as well as how those solutions may uh you know work and fit into your uh specific environment uh so i see another question here uh you know about uh how uh, would I get started if I have a current backup solution and want to uh, get started on uh, on AWS? Uh, so, I mean, the easiest way uh, to get started, if you uh, don't uh, already have an AWS account, you can go uh, on to uh, aws.amazon.com and uh, uh, sign up for a uh, a account uh, for free. We have something called the uh, the uh, free tier, which is essentially for 12 months. There's certain services that you can uh, that you can uh, be able to utilize at uh, at no uh, at no cost. Uh, so that gives you a great uh, opportunity to go ahead and um, and test things out. Uh, so one of the great things about uh, utilizing the AWS cloud is, you know, um, you're able to uh, to do so without uh, having to uh, uh, have, you know, a huge uh, upfront uh, cost. So um, you're able to uh, to have the uh, kind of agility to uh, be able to try things, uh, you know, and you can. Uh, try things. If, uh, if certain uh, things aren't uh, exactly what you're looking for, you can start utilizing any services and uh, other services, and you can do that very easily and quickly. Uh, you know, within uh, minutes, you could deploy you know any of these given services in any one of our 19 uh, regions around the world. Uh, 
And, uh, you know, again, that would just be if you go to aws.amazon.com slash free is the uh, easiest way to go ahead and create that uh, that free tier uh, account. Uh, all right, on that, uh, we're right up at the uh, at the hour. Um, any other uh, questions that uh, did not uh, get answered, we will uh, uh, get back uh, via email. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for attending today's uh, webinar. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on uh, on future webinars.